Okay, so what you guys are going to need in order to put in a Seiko extractor, this is a medium size. They also make a small for the 223 bolt face and they make a large for a magnum bolt face. In this case, we're using a medium. You're going to need a number 38 drill bit and this needs to be a high performance cobalt drill bit. If you're trying to use a standard old high speed steel drill, you're not going to get through the bolt. It's going to dull on you and you're going to heat treat the bolt and then you'll never get it drilled. So get a good drill bit to start with. Don't even mess around with these cheap um, high-speed steel drills. So get this is an AccuPro cobalt drill, and it will work. It'll do many, many rifle bolts before you need a new one. And then you're going to need a number 31 drill. So it's a 38 and a 31. You're going to cut the slot with a 3 16 end mill. I've already got that in the machine, ready to go. You will need a set of parallels in your your vise and you need a fixture for holding your bolt this is also available on Brownells website they sell they had them in their catalog um, this is the same situation as my other fixture that I used for the bolt turning 20 years ago or so when I tried to buy one they didn't have them so I made my own and I've been using this one ever since now I usually bolt this together sitting in the in my vise over there on the bench it's a little easier for me to do it but for video purposes I'm gonna do it right here so we're gonna set the bolt in there and you want to remember that the handle goes up if you put the handle down and you machine it on this side your extractor is gonna be in the wrong side and then you're gonna really be in trouble so we're just gonna set it in there with the handle up this fixture is pretty easy to make for any of you guys that um, know how to use your machines and how to set your material up. And all you want to do is cut a V-notch so that it will hold this thing perfectly straight, perfectly centered into your fixture. And another V-notch in the other piece. And the way I did this is I machined that all together in one piece, cut it in half. Took the half that I cut off, put it on the top put me two center dots on here so that I know which direction it goes on if you was to flip this around backwards it could be off a few thousand so to eliminate that I put my two little witness marks on here now you want to rotate this bolt until it hits that stop right there and that's the perfect spot how did I come up with the perfect spot well it was by trial and error when you first machine your fixture Machine your little mark in there, your little recess, so that that bolt lug, the locking lug, will hit that recess and put it in the machine and see if you're top dead center. If you're not top dead center, you can take a little more material out. And you just do that until you get the fixture that you want to hold it where you want it to be held. So you want that to be top dead center. We're going to set it in the vise here and tighten it up. We're setting it on those parallels. Doesn't need to be real, real tight. I'm going to put these drill bits over here out of the way so they don't get blown off of the machine. And we're going to set up to cut our first slot. Now, you can find instructions on the internet on how to put these Seiko extractors in. Do the math. Every one's going to be a little different. It depends on how much of the bolt face you left. Um, so you just want to make sure that you get your numbers right. Those instructions are available on the internet. Different places sell them. Um, they used to come with the extractors. When you buy an extractor, it would come with a set of instructions. But the last several extractors that I have bought have not came with instructions. So you just got to know your numbers or find the instructions somewhere. I keep a copy laying around. So it's pretty easy for me to just do the numbers here. Okay, so now we've got this set up in here. The first thing I got to do is find the edge of my part. And I'm going to do that just by turning the machine on, cranking my table over until I can see the end mill touch the face of the part.
Now I'm going to set my X on my digital readout so I know where I'm at on the edge. We've got to find the center of the bolt. So we want to line the center of this end mill up with the center of that firing pin hole. And I'm just going to do it by eye. So I'm going to put my head down in front of the camera just for a second. And I'm going to get that lined up for you. You bring the end mill down until it's in the right spot and you can see the center of that end mill. And I'm going to call that center. So we're going to zero out the Y. I'm going to crank it over a little bit. I'm going to come down close to the top. And now we got to find this top surface. I'm going to do that by bringing the table up until it touches. And I touched the very top of the bolt. So now we want to make sure we leave this locked. We don't want to move anything now. We're going to do everything off of the digital readout and the knee. We want to set a zero on our knee right here because that's going to set our depth. That's how we're going to figure out how deep we're going by changing the setting over here. I think you guys can see that in the camera. If you've got a Bridgeport style knee mill, you know what I'm talking about by setting this over here on zero. Now. I am going to run coolant on this thing just to keep from burning up my end mill. So we get that set up. I've got one of them little air misters on here. And we just need a very little bit just like what you're seeing there. And I'm gonna cut that slot. Now I've done the math, and I came up with the numbers using my little instruction sheet that I have. And we need to cut a slot 540 thousandths long from this face, counting the diameter of the end mill. You don't have to subtract anything. We're not working from the center of the end mill. We're working from this edge and this face. It makes it simple for you. So it's gonna be 540 long, by 185 thousandths deep. So first thing we're going to do, we've got our zero set over here and we've got our zero set right here. So we're going to come up 30 thousandths on the table and I'm going to cut my slot to 540.
going to go to 185 on that last pass. So now we can take that 3 16 end mill out of there and we're going to drill the hole for the extractor to sit in. Now this is going to be the 31 drill. That's the larger one of the two that you're going to need. And we're not going to change a single thing here as far as our X and Y's or anything goes. We just want to go back to the 540 number. And we're going to drill a hole. So at 540 thousandths, you want to drill that pivot hole. Again, we need some coolant on here. Don't try to drill the hole all at one time. Work it in there. way so you guys can see it. Okay, you don't want to force the drill bit real fast through there. Just slowly work it through, raise it up, break the chip off, bring it down, break the chip off, bring it up, bring it down. Just you guys know how to do that, I think. Now, we are ready to take this drill bit out. And pull that collet out of there. And we're going to set up our number 38 drill bit. Now when you use that 38 drill, that's a little short stubby drill. You don't want to shove a whole lot of it up into your chuck, your collet here, or it's going to be too short and you won't have enough to drill deep enough into your next job, what we're getting ready to do here. So we're gonna take this fixture out of the vise, get rid of these parallels. We'll blow the vise out good. And you need a square. So you're going to have to have a square big enough to reach across your vise and sit in there like this. I'm going to have to lower the table down quite a bit, so I might as well start cranking that handle now. Alright, now we've got to set this back up in the vise and you when you make your block to hold this bolt make it thick enough 
so that you've got enough material here to grab a hold of so when you turn it up sideways because it has to hang off the vice body and you only have I've got about three quarters of an inch in the vise so that's plenty for what we want to do and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and sandwich these two together so that it's square this is sitting in the vise this fixture is going to be sitting up against the square and it's all in there so now we have that fixture and that bolt standing up straight So what you're going to do now is you're going to line everything back up, bring that down. I'm going to crank the table up some. And I'm going to stop on zero. My table needs to stop on zero. Now, I'm going to bring this drill bit in. I want to bring it down until it touches right there. So once it touches, I'm going to lock my quill. I'm going to roll my drill stop up to the top. Blow off any dust or dirt or chips that's sitting on the drill stop. Okay, and that stops right there. So we want to drill that hole 420 thousandths deep. How do I know I'm going to drill it exactly 420 thousandths deep? Well, I brought it down here until it stops. I've got my table set at zero. So I'm going to crank my table up 420 thousandths of an inch. So that's going to be four turns plus 20 thousandths. So there's one turn, two, three, four, and 20. All right, so now... I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but my stop will allow me to drill 420 thousandths deep. My stop right here is going to allow me to drill 420 thousandths deep and then it's going to stop. That's as deep as I can go. So that's how I set my depth on my drill when I'm doing these Seiko extractors and whenever you're drilling the hole that's important on the depth you always set it with your table. Raise your table up the distance that you want to go and then come down to your stop. It'll work every time. So we're going to move our coolant hose back in here. We want coolant on that. We turn that on, let it run for a second because that is a siphon feed and it has to get up to the top. I can speed it up by giving it a little bit more air. Now we've got coolant coming out of there. You can see it. Okay, so now we're ready to drill that hole. We're almost ready to drill that hole. We want to make sure that that hole is right up next to the edge of that slot. So I'm going to do that also by working this drill up and down. You can see me working that drill bit up and down. And I'm going to just keep rolling it in. About five thousandths at a time. Until I see that drill bit put a scratch on that back surface. Now if you're new at doing these. Or you just want to be a little bit more precise. Which this is not a real precise hole. It just has to be within a thousandth or two and you can probably do that just by eyeballing this you could put some bluing on here and you bring that drill bit down and as soon as it scratches the bluing off it show you a little scratch mark that'll work the same way but I'm gonna think that after you've done as many as I've done you won't need no bluing on here so there we are that's where we're gonna drill the hole Now we gotta wait for the coolant to get to the top of the hose again. And 
again, we just want to drill a little bit and pull it back out. Drill a little bit, pull it out. Drill a little, pull it out. Drill a little, pull it out. right there. And when it won't go no farther, you're 420,000 deep. Okay, so now I can take this out of the vise. I can take the bolt out of this fixture. When you guys do set up, if you got to make your own fixtures, you can make this fixture out of aluminum. It doesn't hold any pressure, don't have to be super strong, so I just used the block of aluminum that I had when I made this thing, and it works just fine. It's done literally, I don't know how many extractors I have put in using this little block. So now what we're going to do is deburr this thing. And I'm going to do that over here. Okay, so I'm gonna take my little deburr knife I've got up here and just real easy deburr this thing. Just very lightly. Don't need to remove a lot of metal, but I just wanna knock off a little burr, okay? You can do a good job with this little deburr knife is all you need to do. So now here's a close up. Let me get in front of the camera so it'll focus good for you. Here is a close-up of what we've done. We've drilled that hole, milled that slot, and then we've drilled the end hole in here for the spring and the retaining clip to go in. So now the only thing left to do to this is I'm going to bead blast this whole head. Okay, I'm going to clean this whole head up, bead blast it, and then I'm gonna blue it. And then the extractor will be ready to go in place. So let's go over to the bead blaster and I'll show you how we do that real quick. <laughs> 